Good afternoon, everyone. Respected Sir Izo, Ma'am Lano, the author and his colleagues, family, friends, and well wishers. Firstly, I want to congratulate the author on his debut book, and also it is an absolute honor for me to be doing this review on the book, The Overthinking Barrett, written by someone I have known closely and whose life is an inspiration for me in many aspects of my own life. Secondly, I consider myself immensely privileged to be in a room full of intellectuals, professionals, and trailblazers of the society in many capacities. I believe this afternoon we are all connected by our love for literature more than anything else. When I first opened a copy of this book, Overthinking Parrot, the brilliant was enough to catch my attention. I won't read the exact lines because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But it talks about how the writer throws his friend from his family. And as far as I've known him, the prelude, his life is a testimony to his writings. As I was sitting here and I was listening to Ma'am Lano and Sir giving the reviews, and I was just thinking to myself, it's so nice to hear from them because since I've read this book, I wish that I could just hear from all of you how it speaks to you because it has spoken to me so personally and so deeply. The Overthinking Barrett is a collection of prose and poetry which is divided into three sections where the author takes us on a journey where he speaks through his heart, through his mind and as a village boy, reminiscing his childhood days and memories. Each section has its own beautiful way of capturing the imagination and the attention of the readers and one cannot help but surrender to it. The first section, the author lays the heart bare for the readers with all its heartache, excitement and thrill. He goes on to say that nobody is devoid of emotions, everybody feels and for some of us, writing becomes, words become a beautiful medium to express ourselves. Literature has often proven to be a lifesaver from making wrong decisions and also to wind up one's emotions, be it sadness, anger, or happiness. I've come across articles on love, people talking about love, but these chapters on love hit on a different note, like being reminded of a first love, a first heartbreak, and how the human heart continuously longs for love and care. The chapter called Mediocre Love is a timeless reminder of how each of us should love. I leave it to you guys, I leave it to the readers again to discover the riches of his writings on your own. There is a saying that the, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. And truly the emotions and the complexity with which each of our hearts function is accurately captured and pinpointed through the chapters in this section. The second section for me contains the crux of this book. The writer's personality is beautifully unraveled in this section as he compares himself to an overthinking parent. It is a paradox because a parent doesn't think but mimics whatever it hears and oftentimes we are like this overthinking parent with lots of ideas but unable to execute them. One can be full of ideas, but idea without execution is futile. The mind can be chaotic at times, or most of the times, but it is a reflection of how we perceive the world. We have to embrace this chaos and turn them into something beautiful. The writer challenges the norms which we have embraced because we live in a society where being emotional is not manly. Success is overly glorified. Maintaining image is considered a priority, where people put on marks to hide their incompetence, where unemployment is soaring due to lack of dignity of who are being crushed under different kinds of pressures instead of pursuing their passion and overcoming their fears. And how often we as humans fail to encourage one another human being going through their own cycle of struggles and hardships. The last section speaks of the serenity of village life and the sweet memories associated with it while growing up. 
The author holds his roots there by portraying these pictures both as a sewing boy and as a naga. While reading this section, I wished that the innocence that runs in the minds of the village folks is something I wish I never lost. Because village life reminds me of the simplicity and the genuineness of every naga. In the name of modernism, we have embraced corruption, ideals, ideas which were very new to us and slowly our culture is being diminished. One cannot help but feel the urge to go back to the innocent days. Only after reading this book, this fact was consolidated that Messi is a long gomer. And this fact is asserted because of Umas and Argentina's love story during the World Cup. Two brothers, the writer says, who were separated at birth. Thoughts and ideas conveyed by this book will stand the test of time and will be relevant for many decades to come.